about the impact of tomatoes on technology, engineering, and design. Buckle up. I'm Jeanielle Kastner. And I'm Brigham Mosley. And we are playwrights, but more about that in a bit. Because first, we have an incredibly important question to ask you. Is everyone ready to make the most important decision of your lives? Thank you. OK, Ugh. be honest. Do you believe a tomato to be a fruit or a vegetable? Now, if you're team fruit, you're going to clap with me in unison. Ready? I am a fruit. Hey. OK, there was some hesitation. Let's do it again. <laughs> I am a fruit. United, they stand. All right, if you're team vegetable, clap now. I am a vegetable. Hey there. OK, so now we've got this world, this theater, divided into two factions holding very dearly onto their personal truths. Truths which, mind you, are both supported by the time-tested Merriam-Webster. Now, you've separated yourselves based on this unshakable, identity-forming moment. Again, the most important decision of your life. Yeah, you walked in here today with a family, with a heritage, maybe even a religion. But no, this is who you are now. You are a fruit or a vegetable. Oh, OK, so let's just start out with our fruits here. Where are my fruits? I am a fruit. Here's what we love about fruits. I feel like we lost some fruits there. I'm just going to say like. Do it again. Do it again. I am a fruit. There you oh, go. Here's what we love about fruits, in addition to being willing to do it again. Uh, <laughs> you came in, and you were like, pulpy, edible fruit, full stop. OK, you see the heart of the matter and the unshakable foundation of definitions. You look at this world, and you go, koala bear? Nah, son. That's a marsupial. You are willing, nay, obligated, to carry the banner of linguistic and biological integrity. And so, it doesn't matter if you believe a tomato is a vegetable, or even if you accept that society is smuggling this fruit into vegland. You know that words have to mean something in order for our society to function. Mm. You love your encyclopedia. You do the New York Times crossword puzzle in pen. You believe a fruit is a fruit by definition, and we don't get to change what a word means. Get that fruit pride. Clap it with me. I am a fruit. Thank you. Oh, wait, you. now hold on. Where are my vegetable folks? I am a vegetable. Now, I resent the implication that our veg heads don't like encyclopedias or don't do the New York Times crossword. Sure, maybe they do it in pencil because they reserve the right to use placeholders while they figure things out. See, they understand that language is fluid. A word means what people mean when they use it. The definition says it is a fruit that is eaten as a what? Uh -huh. See, what I like about these vegetable folks is they, yes, they know that a tomato is technically a fruit, but they have surrendered their right to intellectual superiority and have instead joined the people, the masses, where words mean something in action. They don't want a tomato in their fruit salad. They know that society falls apart when tomato ends up in their fruit salad. Thus, they are team vegetable, thus loud and proud. Clap it with me. I am a vegetable. Uh. Hmm. So now we have these two diametrically opposed tomato truths in this room. How do we move forward as a TEDx SMU auditorium society? Mm. Do we have to debunk one word or the other? Do we need to find one shared accurate tomato truth? Now, me a few years ago, I would be like, not at all. You want to believe a tomato is beef. Go ahead. Do you. Yeah, we're theater makers. We like our truth fuzzy, multiple, contradictory, complicating truths. I mean, we write plays, which is basically lying. We write fictional worlds <laughs> with fabricated people. One could argue all we do is lie. Uh, art is a lie that tells the truth. Pablo Picasso. We didn't even fact check that. We did a light Google. Yeah. <laughs> and, and when it comes to words, we're going for evocative and powerful. But slippery and poetic. But then, we were pulled from our natural habitat of contradictions and hyperbole, and were commissioned to shadow the Dallas Morning News and write a play about journalism, what it is and why it matters. Daunting, right? So suddenly we find ourselves in this newsroom with people whose whole job, as far as we can tell, is to tell the truth about what happened. Which means that whatever happens, they have to look at it. Look at it. Look at it again. And not only do they have to look at it, they have to tell the truth about it. So we're in this room, us fiction writers, with people whose whole job is to tell the truth. Like the truth, like capital T, truth. They don't have the luxury of multiple, contradictory, sexy tomato truths. It, and not only do they have to tell the truth, they have to find clear, unshakable clarity in each of their words. For example. A journalist tells us about a story that she's working on. A woman's car is found at the top of a parking garage, and her body is found dead many stories below. And the family believes something must have happened, a homicide. She was pushed. 
But the police say there's no evidence for that. She jumped. But we know something happened, something that mattered. And it's this journalist's job to tell everyone about it, but all she has are... Words. But every word has a... Charge. Jumped? Pushed? Which did you say, we asked her. And she picked a third option. She fell. The thing that happened regardless. The capital T truth. You have a decision to make as a journalist, it seems, and it lives in every verb. Jumped? Pushed? Fell. So while we get to look inside ourselves and, and figure out our relationship to words, perspectives, beliefs, Vegetables. fruits, uh, meanwhile things are happening, things that matter, and someone has to find the words for it. There was a woman, a woman who matters, and she fell. More details as the story breaks. Because someone has to look at it. Look at it. Look at it again. Then we start to learn the scale of this thing, that a big part of journalism is fighting corruption, holding local institutions accountable, and protecting democracy. We learn about the struggles of limited resources, of attacks on credibility, of 24-hour workdays covering the worst events in the area, and the impossible task of finding perfect words to build perfect trust so people will believe you and they too will look at it. Look at it. Look at it again. And the more closely we pay attention to how every word ends up on every page of our local newspaper, the bigger this whole thing gets. Because every word asks a question about truth. Can we know what happened? Which is a question about trust. Can we believe each other? Which is a question about safety. What happens when what happens happens to me? Which is a question about community. When I'm in trouble, will anyone care? Which is a question about loneliness. Is someone gonna look at it? Look at it. Look at it again. Or if this thing falls apart, will we all be terribly, terribly alone? It was a lot easier when our questions were just about tomatoes. Yeah, now it's all so big. The questions inside journalism, they scare me. It, it all scares me. Remember when we were cute and words didn't matter and we made them all clap? Oh, we were so young. Mm. <laughs> so maybe we can be journalists about this a little, figure out uh, the truth of what's happening. Okay. So what's the truth, the, the, the capital T truth, happening right here on stage while we're supposed to be presenting at TEDxSMU? Okay. Um... Capital T Truth, um, I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, I uh, think that's it. I am scared. <laughs> okay, truth, truth. I'm worried that people will get hurt if we don't know what's happening. I wanna know what's happening. I want to not be alone. I want us to support each other. And hold each other accountable. I want to support local journalists. And hold them accountable. I want to look at it. I want to look at it. I, I want, want to look, look at, at it, it again. again. Thank, Thank you. you all.